morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man should leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Be Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Watching homemade dough rise is really a very beautiful thing. Though imperceptible to the eye when watched constantly, the rising of the dough is startling when one steps away from it and returns at a later time. A very small amount of yeast mixed with wheat and flour produces an explosion of dough in the bowl. Step away for an hour or two and voila, you know, the dough has quadrupled in size. I think that's an appropriate image for the kingdom of God as we hear this morning. Though we are prone to reducing the kingdom of of eternal life in heaven, Jesus ushered in something much larger, a new way of living beginning right here, right now that makes real God's presence to all. From the person of Jesus, with his individual ministry and preaching, will grow a full and robust kingdom here on earth, the fullness of which all will be reached at an appointed time. Jesus yearned for the abundance of life for all in both this life and in the next life. He desires for each one of us to help in building God's kingdom here on earth. Paul's letter to the Ephesians specifically addresses married couples, but his point is applicable to all who are invested in the kingdom. Love one another, even as Christ loved the church. Love one another, even as Christ loved the church. This is a sacrificial love. One that loves another as one loves himself. One that sacrifices the other through the gift of self. Authentic acts of self-gift are a love that leavens and allows for flourishing in relationships. And as the bonds of love are built between us, the kingdom of God grows. God's presence is made real on this very earth through the hands that serve, the words that encourage, the feet that carry the good news, and the hearts that are touched by the giving and receiving of one another's love. So the next time we see a loaf of bread baking, Let us take a moment to admire the smallness of the yeast and the grandeur of its results. So too are our acts of self-gift. Even the smallest ones, even when we cannot see the results in the immediate moment, we are an agent of yeast, building up the kingdom of God through love, Love is the leavening agent that grows our relationships and ultimately grows the kingdom of God here on earth. As we gather together this morning with confidence in the Father's love, we bring our needs to him for church leaders. May God grant ample wisdom, patience, and love for all who lead the people of God. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for civil authorities. May God grant them compassion and wisdom in their decision making. Let us pray to the Lord. For our loved ones who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may Christ's healing hand rest upon them and bring them relief. Let us pray to the Lord. May all members of this community, for all members of this community, may the love of Jesus flow through us to one another in small and large ways. Let us pray to the Lord. For the beloved dead and for those who have no one to mourn their death, may they soon be welcomed into the fullness of God's kingdom. At this Mass, we especially remember Ken Courtney. Let us pray to the Lord. And for our own intentions, which we now mention inside. Through the intercession of Our Lady, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed by you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, and work of the hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Though you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, the fruit of the vine and working in the hand, it will become our spiritual grace. Please pray with me that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world to bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Father, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great day.